Good morning, friends. It is Sunday, May 10th, 2020. It is Mother's Day, and I am Reverend Becky Sweet, Senior Pastor of the Kenmore United Methodist Church, and thrilled to be coming to you from our church sanctuary for just a few moments today, because Bishop Webb and some of the cabinet and conference staff will be leading us in worship today. But we thought it was important to share with you some of Kenmore United Methodist Church's announcements and prayer concerns so that you might be informed of what is happening locally on this day. So I have some announcements to share with you first. On behalf of the Staff Parish Relations Committee, I am informing you that we have received notice from Judy Melia of her intention to retire from the position of church secretary and office manager. Judy has served faithfully among us for nearly a decade and plans to begin her retirement in early summer. We certainly have all appreciated her ministry and will miss her being around here on a regular basis quite a bit. The Staff Parish Relations Committee will share with you at a later date concerning celebrations of Judy's ministry and service. As I've been announcing for the, the last couple of months, the Kenmore United Methodist Church building continues to be closed to public gatherings according to the guidelines set forth by local, county, state, and national government officials. This will continue at least for the next couple of weeks. Until further notice, our worship services will be offered via streaming connected with the church website. Deacon Bonnie and I will continue to offer daily words of encouragement and inspiration to adults and children via Facebook Live. Donations to the Kenton Closet and Kenton Care Service may be dropped off either at their sites or at our church. If you are bringing donations to the church, please contact me or Deacon Bonnie so that we may bring your donations inside. If you are in need of the outreach of Kenton Cares, please contact them directly. A couple of times a week, they post applications on their Facebook page, which are very easy to access. The Horizon class is already in the midst of their annual plant sale. Orders were due last Sunday and hanging baskets have already been picked up. The bedding plants may be picked up on Saturday, May 23rd from 9 to 11 a.m. at the canopy entrance of the church. All orders can be picked up in drive through no contact fashion there at the church. The proceeds of this sale will be donated to the Kenmore United Methodist Church General Fund. Deacon Bonnie is offering to lead a weekly conversation based on the Upper Room Devotionals. Those Upper Room Devotionals are now available on the church website. If you are interested in participating in those conversations, please contact Deacon Bonnie so that she can get you signed up. And now for our prayer joys, I know that you are faithful in uplifting all of these celebrations and concerns in your prayers on a daily basis. So you may take note of these and this list is also available on the church website in case you would like to print it out and place it near your place of daily prayer. First of all, we celebrate and give thanks for the joy of motherhood on this Mother's Day, as well as pray for all of those for whom this is a day when they may be filled with sorrow or longing. We uplift everyone in our prayers. We express our appreciation to Bishop Webb and his ministry team who brought us today's worship and message and have offered that to churches all throughout our conference. 
We offer congratulations on the birth of Harper Emerson Hood, who was born on May 5th, 2020, to Drs. Andrew and Mimi Hood. Harper is the little sister of Henley Hood and is the new granddaughter of Ken and Judy Hood. Congratulations, and may Harper bring joy to all. Also, we have some birthdays to celebrate. On May 16th, Grace Turek will celebrate her 104th birthday. And today is Frank Bright's 60th birthday. Happy birthday to Grace and Frank. We continue to express our gratitude for the caregiving ministries of our pastoral staff. That includes Reverend Gail Lewis, Deacon Bonnie LaValle, and yours truly. We continue to contact members of our church family and friends and express our love and concern in a variety of ways because we love you and each and every one of you are precious to us. We also extend our gratitude to Scott Kropodlowski, who even today is working on the technology for our worship streaming. Thank you so much, Scott. This gets better and better every week. We express our Christian sympathy to families and persons who have lost loved ones. We extend that to the family of Rita Thurston, who passed away on Friday, May 1st, from coronavirus. Rita turned 100 years old in February of this year. We also extend Christian sympathy to the family of Gerald Middlefelt, who passed away on April 24th. And we extend sympathy to Paul Morano's cousin Ward and his family. Ward's mother and brother have passed away in the last three weeks. His mother Janet passed away of older age issues and his brother Mark from throat cancer. We uplift all of these families and their extended family and circle of friends in our prayers as they grieve the loss of these loved ones. On our prayer list for this week, we also lift up Karen Batchen's dear friend, John Kloss, who is at Kenmore Mercy following a stroke. And we pray for Tom Ninos, the nephew of Sally and Peter Ninos. Tom is hospitalized in Canandaigua with brain cancer. And we ask for prayers of healing and support for all of the families that we mentioned today. At home, those in need of special prayer are Mike Bell, Barb Frazier, Candy Gemmer, Ross Gemmer, Sally Grove, Chuck Hoyler, Joanna Langerick, Carol Lozier, Esme Megan, Dorothy Messelaner, Dave Schultz, Jack and Muriel Small, Virginia Snyder, and Mara Voli. We also pray for Reverend Nancy Roth, who is the cousin of Donna Percy in Oberlin, Ohio, who is now in hospice care. Please also continue to pray for those feeling especially isolated from their family and friends, those feeling stressed, depressed, and anxious during these days, loved ones in need of special care in their homes, in nursing home settings, and in rehab facilities, and those making decisions on behalf of others related to health matters, work, education, and all kinds of care. And we pray in gratitude and seeking the protection for all of the essential workers, even as we are mindful of those who are still living separated from their families so that they will not um, share the coronavirus unknowingly with those that they love. During the worship service that Bishop Webb and the conference staff will be offering, there will be several times of silence when you may offer prayers. And I encourage you to lift up those we have mentioned today in your prayer concerns. And know, again, you are precious, you are loved. Count your blessings and recognize how much God has Offer to each of us as God calls us by name into ministry. Amen.
We are grateful for the pastors, worship leaders, musicians, and tech people of the churches within the Upper New York Conference of the United Methodist Church. Their faithful work in providing worship opportunities during this season has been a blessing to so many. Today, members of the Upper New York Cabinet and one of our camp and retreat ministry staff members are pleased to join you in a worship opportunity so that those who have worked so hard may experience a time of rest and renewal. The global pandemic known as COVID-19 has disrupted lives in so many ways. Individuals have struggled with physical illness. Families have experienced the loss of loved ones and many are dealing with the loss of income and wondering what the future may hold. During this time, our normal has been turned upside down. Fear and uncertainty have frequently grabbed hold of us. Yet, as those who follow Jesus Christ, we continue to proclaim that no matter what, no matter when, God is. As we worship together, may we allow God's Spirit to speak within our hearts and minds, reminding us of the truth that God offers, the promises that God keeps, and may we be strengthened within our own lives for the days ahead. We also pray that this time will be one of equipping us to offer to a hurting world a message of hope and assurance. The psalmist invites us to worship with these words. O oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to God with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For God is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. Oh God, 
Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for me. Hello, friends. Hear these words from Psalm 27, 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. A war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me on the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, how do we handle fear? Let's see what Psalm 27 has to say. The psalm is not about freedom from trouble or threat, 
but a solid grounding in faith that enables the reader to endure whatever trouble comes along. We're reminded of God's faithfulness here and elsewhere in the Psalms and throughout all of Scripture. The Psalms often recall the exodus through the Red Sea as deliverance away from Pharaoh's army to remind us of God's faithfulness in the past and that God is worthy of our trust in the present and in the future. Verse 3 reminds us that an army encamps against us, an enemy of some kind, whether it is fear of the future, family drama, an unfavorable diagnosis, loneliness, financial woes, depression, grief over the loss of a loved one, or, or that we have to be separated from them during the pandemic. Those are just some of the enemies that encamp around us, wanting to strike or to strike again. But the psalmist tells us we needn't fear. The psalmist also knew that trust is strengthened by worship. We read in verse 4 of the desire of the psalmist to live in the house of the Lord all his days, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. When we come together in faith, we are strengthened, even if it's through the wonders of technology. Psalm 27 does not just consist of words printed on a page. It consists of a blessed truth that no matter what, no matter when, God can be trusted, so we needn't fear. We were reminded in Hebrews 13, 5 of our Lord's promise not to leave us or forsake us ever. That's good news. There are so many promises in scripture to encourage and strengthen us. That's why we need to read our Bibles daily and to be transformed by what we read. I heard about a rabbi who said that he wanted the folks in his congregation to have the scriptures on their hearts. Somebody said, don't you mean you want the scriptures to be in their hearts? And he said, no, I want the scriptures to be on their hearts so that when their hearts break, the scriptures will flow in. Wow. Life is hard right now. We're in a worldwide crisis. Having faith doesn't exempt us from grief or getting angry or getting confused or, yes, even getting scared, even though the psalmist would tell us we needn't fear. Where's your greatest sense of security? My greatest sense of security is in my relationship with God in Jesus Christ. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Friends, remember that the promises of God cannot be broken by standing on them. The Lord is worthy of my trust. The Lord is worthy of your trust. No matter what, no matter when, God is our light, our salvation, and our stronghold. I hope you have found that to be true, because it is. Hallelujah. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me in this time of prayer. We'll take part of our time to look back. We'll take part of our time to be present, and we'll take part of our time to look forward. I'll invite you first, simply take a deep breath, inhale and exhale. Do that a few times or more if you need. Remember God's spirit is in you, in us, among us, around us, beyond us. Thanks be to God. Remember, as you breathe in God's breath, God's spirit, 
You are a beloved child of God, and nothing can change that. Nothing you do or I do or anyone does, nothing you could ever be will keep God from loving you. That's the foundation of our prayer life. I want to invite you, if you wish, to have something to write with or otherwise record your thoughts, your responses, your prayer. I want to also invite you to consider that this is a means of prayer, a way of praying, not just for an individual, but maybe for prayer partners, maybe for a small group, not just a prayer ministry. It could be any group, any ministry, any gathering. And it might not simply be for the church, but something you care to offer to your community as well. Let's start. I'll invite you to look back over the last day, which for you at this moment of the day you're worshiping might be part of a day, but it could be 24 hours if you wish for it to be. And I want to ask you to look back imaginatively with the eyes of faith, using a tool that a friend of mine named Aunt B taught me and taught a lot of children and their loved ones about using God glasses. Hang on and I'll be right back. When we wear God glasses, we sometimes are given the gift of being able to see our lives and the lives of others as if with God's eyes, as if with God's grace, with God's mercy, with God's righteousness, with God's glory. And I'm given the gift sometimes to see what I wouldn't otherwise have seen, to understand what I wouldn't otherwise understand. So I invite you, whether or not you have God glasses, literally, to do what you can to look with the eyes of faith, the faith in God who loves you so much, the faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord who accompanies us, and our faith in the Spirit filling us and around us, that um, God has been present to you and gifting you and blessing you over the last day. So especially now, please be mindful of the ways God has been present to you, the ways you've been blessed by God over the last day. These may be in small details of your life. They may be in some very grand, huge events that have happened to you. Be mindful of God's blessing to you over the last day. And after our being mindful of God's blessing, I want to ask you to enter into a time that can be a little more difficult in prayer. I tend not to pray this way, so it can be a challenge. Because these days have been so challenging for all of us, because there have been roadblocks, there have been stumblings for us all, there's been a need for healing everywhere. There's been death. We're fearful because we've lost jobs. We don't know what the future holds. In all of this and more, I invite you now to be mindful of how over the past day, part of a day, 24 hours, you may have had times in which you felt that God was distant or you weren't so aware of God's presence in your life. Using that imaginative prayer perspective, your God glasses, look back over your day to consider, honestly, have there been times that you felt like God was distant? And make that a part of your prayer. Thank you. And from that, friends, I invite you to offer yourself to God in whatever way is right, to pray in whatever way is right, in light of the ways God has blessed you in the last day, and in which you felt challenged to sense God's presence in the last day. And I'll be back together with you in a little bit. Thank you.
with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no child of God. Oh, 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 you split the child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child. child of God. One last time, sing it out. I am a child of God. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 and 21. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. When we moved here about 10 years ago, one of my favorite features of the house was a small patch of woods out in our backyard where several tall maples stood. I loved those trees, but within a couple years, they started to die. I had several arborists and tree doctors come over and take a look. They didn't have good news. Something had changed in the soil over the years. It had become too wet to support trees like that. No one was sure why, but the bottom line was clear. If we wanted trees there, we'd have to plant different trees. At first, I was pretty disappointed. I loved those trees. I wanted those trees in that spot. But then I caught the vision that was offered me. I noticed how wild apple trees were thriving nearby, and I began to imagine what other trees I might plant there, trees that might flourish and thrive. 
Imagination allows us to see the possibilities even among the challenges. You and I are certainly facing many challenges. In a few weeks, seemingly out of nowhere, so much has been lost to us. Things like singing Amazing Grace together in the same pew on a Sunday morning, sitting in the stands rooting for your child as she steps up to bat, joking with a co-worker in the cubicle next to yours. Some of us have suffered even greater losses. We've lost a job or we've gotten sick and lost our health. Some of us have even lost a loved one. And to these losses are added the uncertainties of this time about the future we live in. Will there be a second wave? Will there be a bear market? Will the church ever be able to pick up again? It's no wonder we feel unable to see a way forward. But as the passage from Ephesians reminds us, our God is able, able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. A wooden cross and a sealed tomb couldn't limit our God. Neither will coronavirus or bear markets. God is able to accomplish what God seeks. And the God we meet in Jesus Christ seeks nothing less than the renewal and healing of all creation, including you and me and every person online with us today, every person around the world today. This is our Easter faith. It's what allows us to call the day of crucifixion Good Friday. It's what transforms a cemetery into a garden of new life. It's what can help us find, even in the midst of a pandemic, opportunities for personal growth and selfless service. The other day, I witnessed an extraordinary, ordinary miracle. I was in line to offload my trash at the local dump. Two cars ahead of me, an older man began to empty his trunk of trash, but instead of those big 30-gallon bags that most of us have, he had dozens and dozens of little tiny grocery bags. He took one at a time, shuffling slowly from his car to the dumpster and then back again. We couldn't help him because of the social distancing, so we had to wait and wait and wait and wait. Two months ago, someone surely would have honked their horn with impatience or rolled down their window and said something like, can you hurry along? I got places to be and go. Frankly, though I didn't do any of those things, I was thinking them or would have thought them two months ago. But that day, I was prompted to pray for him, to pray that he might be lonely, that he might be cared for and that whatever was keeping him from moving faster might be healed. And as I looked around, I saw other people smiling at him, not in derision, but in appreciation. A few were checking their phones, others were sitting patiently and thinking. No one looked angry or anxious. We just waited while an old man took out his trash. I was proud and amazed by that simple act of grace. I wonder how many more and greater things can God work within us? Here's the thing, when this worship service is over, the facts on the ground will not have changed. COVID-19 will still be a threat. The numbers of positive tests, hospitalizations, unemployed, and even deaths will be far too high. We will still need to wear masks, keep our distance, and wash our hands. But these circumstances, though grave, do not limit what God is able to do. And because God's power is at work within us, and God's love has been poured into our hearts, these circumstances do not determine our present or our future. What new thing is God giving life to even now, in you, in your family, in your church, in your community? God is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. God bless you, my friends. Hello again, friends. Having looked back over the last day or a portion of a day to be mindful of how we've been blessed by God, how God has been present powerfully to us, or how we may have sensed it was difficult to know God's presence, it's now time to be present to God. And I want to acknowledge this may be a challenge for some of us. It's a challenge for me sometimes. This is not a time for me to invite you to be in prayer about what you need specifically or on behalf of another, those times will come. It's not a time to pray about what to do. We'll talk about that one in our next brief session. 
For now, be mindful of what God calls you to be, who God calls you to be right this minute. In light of the blessings you've received, the challenges you've lived, those you've named over the last day. What do you need to be? Who do you need to be for God right this minute? Take time in prayer to be with God. And if it helps, remember those prayerful imagination God glasses to think with grace, to think with mercy, with righteousness, with God's glory about yourself and God's call to you and God's love for you. How is God calling you to be right now in prayer? No matter what, no matter when, God is faithful. In days of tragedy, turmoil, and uncertainty, we cannot, we must not lose sight of who God is. God is constant, loyal, steadfast, and unmovable. God is faithful. And because God is faithful, those of us, the recipients of God's faithfulness, can trust in the promises of God. We have full assurance that when God has promised us and what God has promised us, we can surely stand on it. What God has promised will be realized. It will come to pass. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a human that he should lie or a mortal being that he should change his mind. If God said it, then God will do it. As God promised Abraham that God would be his God and would bless him. God promised that he would walk with him. And if God can walk with Abraham and bless him, surely 
God will walk with us and bless us. O oh, Israel, if we will be God's people, God will be our God. If God is our God, then we will truly be blessed. God promised to protect us. In Psalms 121, it says he will not let your foot slip. He will watch over you day and night, and he will not slumber nor sleep. God promised salvation to all who believed in his son, Jesus Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1 and 16. Now is the time to remember, friends. Now is the time to remember that no matter what, God is faithful. God has faithfully promised that all things will work for the good for all who love the Lord. The question, my friend, is though, even now, when things look the way that they do, when they look bad or when it seems like there's no one around, when it seems discouraging, do we still believe that God is with us? Do we still believe that God is? Can we say, honestly, God, I love you. Can you say, God, I love you? Be not dismayed. Whatever may tide, God will take care of you. No matter what, no matter when, God is faithful and God loves us. Even when trouble comes knocking at our door, not only does God promise that trouble don't last always. And he will make a way out for his children. That he will provide an escape. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, God promised us that neither death nor life. God promised us that even though we may perish, we still will live. God promises us eternal life. So, do you trust him? Do you trust God today? No one who trusts in the Lord will be put to shame. So stay in the arms of God. Stay steadfast in the arms and protection of our God. Keep trusting. Keep believing. My friends, stand on the promises of God. Resting in our Savior as our all and all. And when people see you putting your faith into action, when people see you keeping the faith, when they witness your spirit of hope, when they see you praying to God, when they hear you praising God, when they see you worshiping God day in and night, they will wonder what keeps us hopeful, what keeps you hopeful. 
and maybe they too will want to be a part of the kingdom of God. And maybe they will put their trust in a faithful, loving, and wonderful God and believe that yes, Jesus is the answer. Amen. Hello again. From looking back at where we've been over the last day to being present with God, considering how we need to be now, let's look ahead. I'll ask you now to consider in prayer, imaginatively, what God is now calling you to do. Consider what your plans are for the rest of this day, if there is more to this day before sleep. Or think ahead 24 hours. What are your plans? And in light of what you've heard from God about God's action in your life already, and about God's present action right now, are you being called to keep on the same track? And if so, pray that God might help you be strong, staying on track. If you're being called to change, offer that to God in prayer and seek the power, seek the will, seek the grace to change what needs to be changed. Let's take some time in silence now to offer these prayers to God and to listen for God's response. And please remember, friends, that if it helps you to write or otherwise record your thoughts, your reflections, your prayers, do that. Remember, too, that this may not simply be a prayer practice for you alone, but maybe to share with a prayer partner to grow in faith together or to share with any small group within the church or beyond it. I wish you well in it. And now I want to invite you to share with me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for that word. The other day I found myself gazing out the back window on it as a maple tree and a pear tree were exploding with life and, and colors. And I found my mind wandering back to Acts chapter 17 as Paul is, is preaching to the tomb of an unknown God and Paul declares, nor is God served by human hands as though God needed something since God is the one who gives life and breath and everything else. I wonder sometimes in this season of spring whether God has written on the very fabric of creation for our reading the promise of resurrection life from death of rebirth from destruction, of love that conquers the very tyranny of fear in Jesus Christ. We who know we are followers of Jesus, we know we're called to give, to, to give of ourselves, because we long to join God in telling this story of resurrection, life, and hope, and power, and love in Jesus. And we who are followers of Jesus we know that we gain life by giving life away in self-giving love. And we do so abiding and trusting that God is the one who gives life and breath and everything else. That's why it's always a privilege to come to this time in a worship service when we are invited to give, to give of our time and our talents, our service, a witness and their treasures to partner with God, to invest with you, if you will, to make the power of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus known in this world, to give away, to be a living sign as prophets and practitioners of hope that God is life and breath and everything else. And that is what your gift, your self-giving makes real, makes possible in your church, in your community, in the world. I invite and encourage you to continue to give regularly to the ministry of your local church. I invite you now as part of our self-giving to the glory of God to take your envelope Hold it before you if you're an online giver and you give by a one time or a regular giving in your mind's eye, think even now of that gift. And before you mail it or press enter on your laptop, would you pray with me, please? Well, God, we pray for your Holy Spirit to use these gifts in our lives as living examples of our trust in you and our desire to make the life and death and hope and power and love of Jesus real in the world. Bless these gifts in the life who give them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice 
shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross been blessed by this time of worship. Let us now respond to the invitation to be the body of Christ in the world. Take the message of hope, the promise of God's faithfulness and sufficiency, and live it boldly and share it widely. I am grateful for the testimonies of how you, God's people, have been the hands, feet, and voice of Jesus during these unparalleled days. Your faithfulness is being used by God. Thank you for being the body of Jesus Christ. Continue to look for the ways this week where God is inviting you into the work that God is already doing. Keep saying yes to God, believing and sharing that no matter what, no matter when, God is. And as we go, may we hear these words of blessing from the writer of Hebrews. Now, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do God's will, working in us that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.